Hello, everybody. I toast to you and all you do. I hope you're having a fantastic day today. I have to start with an announcement. You might notice some videos disappear. I'm, somebody might. I'm going to have to take some videos down because I noticed there is a horrible buzzing noise that showed up somewhere along the processing process. <laughs> and uh, so there's a really awful buzzing noise and I'm going to have to remove those videos. I'm sad, but I'm glad I figured it out now. I <laughs> apologize. And I am using a new device and a new app and a new microphone. I'm really hoping that this works out better. My one concern is me brushing my hair up against the microphone. So we're going to have to try to be mindful of that. Hopefully it's not a problem. <laughs> anyway, so we are here today to talk about the full moon. It is coming up on April 6th or 5th, depending on where you are. And it is a full moon in Libra. It is also a pink moon. And the pink moon is named after the first flowers that bloom on the East Coast. They're wild ground phlox. It's a really pretty like ground covering pink flower. And it symbolizes those first flowers that are blooming. This moon really comes out as we see those first flowers. So like here where I live, the dandelions are sprouting. It's amazing. I was just getting on my kids about it the other day. I'm like, don't pick the dandelions. The bees need them. <laughs> so... We have all of those first flowers coming up. This is a fertility moon. It is an action moon. So it is about seeking knowledge. It is about um, empowerment. It's also about self-confidence. And so it's great for just like general, I can do this kind of spell work, energy, focus, that reflecting time. It is also under the Libra energy. So it is really balanced. It brings in this diplomatic energy that is focused on common goals, on finding success, on helping to see both sides and helping to see them with like love and compassion. It is also the seventh of the seven moon full moons that are at 16 degrees, which equals seven. So we have seven, 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 the sun is conjunct Jupiter. We'll get into that later, but we have this lucky aspect. Sorry, just thinking of that 777. It's like jackpot. Uh, so this is a really abundant energy that we're having right now of fertility. But also the number 16 is connected to the tarot of the tower. <sighs> Say that 10 times fast. And it is a sign of sudden change and destruction that really bring about this liberating new self. And as we get more into the transits that are happening, you're gonna really see that theme coming up a lot. And this being the seventh of the seven moons, and it, it just is really this conclusion of the end of this phase. We also had Saturn moving and Pisces moving or not, sorry, we have Saturn and Pluto that have moved into new signs and they are bringing about big change. The one we'll talk about in this video is Pluto because Pluto has moved into Aquarius and that brings in this, <laughs> when you watch this video, if you're only seeing the doom and the destruction in this reading, then you're missing the whole other part of it. But I'm going to go on with the zoom and destruction. So Pluto moving into Aquarius is like the flooding end. Uh, Pluto is of death and destruction and new beginnings. It is the end of something so that we can begin something new. And Aquarius, the myth of Aquarius is the great flood that flooded the earth and has only leaves behind the righteous normally, the somehow the chosen by the gods. And so as Pluto moves into Aquarius, we really feel this flood of like, we need change. Um, ironic, not ironically, I don't know what the right word is here, but when we look at the cycles of this, the last time that Pluto moved into Aquarius was when the Great Revolutionary War happened in France and the, the whole royal party was beheaded 
Uh, I don't see beheadings in the near future, but if you're following the news in France, you're really going to see some of these replaying themes of changing the power from the government to the people. And you're going to see that all over the world. I think you're seeing that a lot in many places. Um, revolutions, people understanding, and then like we've been talking about throughout the videos previously in our own self-revolutions, we have really been encouraged to step away from taking the authority from an external source and taking our own power as our own authority and stepping into that. And so I really see a lot of what's happening is both globally and locally and in your communities and in yourself, this stepping away from external sources of authority and realizing these are my values, this is what I think is important, and this is how I'm going to live my life, and I'm going to step forward like this. We've had a long time to really think about it, and I honestly feel like as long as you're stepping forward with kindness and courtesy, and you're not stepping on other people as you step forward, it doesn't matter what path that you've chosen or the self that you've chosen to be or the, like, the beauty is of being you. The beauty is you in the unique person that you are. And as long as your actions are led with kindness and courtesy and you treat people the way that you want to be treated, we everybody should get along. And we have this amazing society. It's crazy how this golden rule that has made it through societies and time and cultures and languages always comes back really to the fact that if we just treated everybody else the way that we wanted to be treated with kindness and courtesy and integrity, we would all really feel better in life. And the world would be a way better place. And it doesn't matter if, if you believe in Jesus or you believe in Cerberus or you believe in anything in the middle. Sorry, there were like 30 DNA names that just popped into my head all at once and I couldn't pick any of them to say out loud. And then I also got a statue yesterday of Jesus and it's a black female Jesus. I'm so excited about this. <laughs> Can't even contain it, you don't even know. <laughs> but it doesn't matter which path that you follow or what you you know, do with your days or how you dress or how you present yourself or any of the choices that you're making and the experience that you're having in this lifetime, what's important is that you lead with kindness and courtesy of making the right choices and that you treat people the way that you want to be treated. And we take the time to have some understanding that each person's unique beauty is amazing and not threatening. Uh, but anyways, that's very much... Like, it's, it's almost ironic to me, so it's not just me saying these things. It's not just the astrologers that I watch who are talking about, like, grand universal changes. Um, <clears throat> I mentioned Pam Gregory before, but she is really, like, there's this great shedding, this great change. But it's not just in this magical community or the astrological community. I see this on Joe Rogan. I see this on the Matt Walsh channel. I see this in places that you wouldn't even think that we are like at this breaking point in society as a whole and we need to make these changes. And the only way we're going to make these changes is if we each take responsibility for ourselves and our actions and we move forward with kindness and love and respect. And it's just... The irony is almost eye-opening that we see this across all spectrums. I mean, you can, Matt Walsh is super conservative. If you're sensitive to conservative thoughts, I would not watch his channel. But he says things like, we are at this breaking point and we need to move forward. And even though he's very conservative and some of his ideals I don't necessarily agree with, I do recognize the breaking point that we're at and I do see it is time to step forward, but he's super, I like, this is the opposite end of the spectrum. This is as far away as you could get from where I'm sitting in this witchy, pagan, alternative world. 
and yet we both see the destruction and the rubble that we are in in this place and that we are stepping through to this new beginning and what are you doing as you step through and so this moon under this libra this justice balance is shining a light onto all of these universal energies in such a way that it's like heart it's like i'm bringing you this peaceful harmony because we are in the midst of this great revolution change destructive place and we're stepping through to the other side i just got that song in my step on through to the other side okay anyways uh so it, it's very empowering it is diplomatic balanced it is a major shift and yet it's okay and i'll talk more about this later but i very much get this vision of a young child stepping through this rubble destruction but there is a clear path and the gods are behind you like with their hands on your back they're like you got this you can do this like just follow the path and use you got this uh and so today's Okay, I'll show you the chart first. Today's chart is very much a web of interconnectedness. And as I said earlier, if you only focus on the destructive aspects or the like breaking down parts, then you're definitely not getting the whole picture and you're missing the most important part, which is this new birth, this beginning, this fresh start that we have happening. So we have the chart here. As you can see, we have the moon over here in Libra. We have a lot of things going on over here. And when we get into talk about them, there's really only two transits that are happening. I mean, two, I don't even know what this word would be. The transits that are happening are so interconnected that there are only two, two aspects to talk about. Because like, I can't just take say the sun and the moon and talk about this because the sun is conjunct to cry on Jupiter and Eris. That's a lot of conjunctions. Uh, we also have, let's get into it because this is the big one. Um, we're going to talk about this first and then we'll talk about what I just said. So we have Venus. Actually, no, no, I'm sorry. Scratch that. This is easier. We'll talk about the sun, the moon, and Eris and Cryon all conjunct. So Cryon is conjunct to the Sun, and then Sun is to Jupiter, and then Jupiter is to Aries. I don't, well, let's see, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Oh, see, Eris and Cryon are barely outside of the conjunct. I'm pretty sure it's like seven. It might be smaller than five. Uh, I don't know. So. All in Aries, this is all a very fresh start energy. When we talk about the sun being conjunct to Jupiter, this is like a really good luck, grand, expanding energy. It is reaching out into the cosmos and it is finding all that amazing things that you need. And it's like, bam, here they are. Come and get them. I very much see the like, you know you're in the tunnel and the, there's the light and the moon like indiana jones kind of tunnel and the light is shining on the, the jewel that they're looking for and this is very much that expanding like this is a very lucky expanding energy on the other side you have the sun conjunct to cryon uh cryon is the wounded past the wounded child the wounded warrior the part of yourself that you carry your trauma with. And when we have it conjunct to the sun, it is a reminder that we might have some oppressed feelings and let's talk about them, let's deal with that and this gentle support that you need in order to do so. It is also recognition of the inner child and that sometimes we have to give credit to our inner child. We have to say, you know, you did a good job surviving you, you made it through that. It's not your fault. We have to grieve those parts of our life. We have to let go of the guilt and we have to really just move forward and, and learn from them. And so that's what this energy is really doing. It's like, here's a gentle hug to say, hey, I'm here for you. And 
you need to honor your inner child and your wounded self and you need to heal and learn from that so that you can transform and really move forward with this beautiful abundant energy that you're being provided with on the other side we have jupiter conjunct with iris now iris is the chaos goddess who threw the apple on the table and called out all of the gods and was like hey no no you didn't invite me you don't want to play fair and do the right thing and do you know be justful i'm going to call you out and i'm going to make sure that everybody knows i'm not even this is the kind of energy that doesn't call you out like Psst, let me let me tell you this is the kind of energy that's like in front of everybody says hey i got your number and we're not leaving here until we get this figured out and when it's conjunct with jupiter it is very much an experience expansion of this justice and noble truth and so it's really calling out all of these falsehoods all of the remaining like any kind of you know any of the remaining things that you hold on to or you're a part of that aren't serving you justice that aren't helping you succeed. It's calling those out and it's saying, hey, let's deal with this. Let's leave that in the past. Let's not move forward with that energy and let's really find success that you have potential right in front of you. Like not just potential, but like you will succeed in this. Let's deal with these things. This is all that's left. Um, so this transit really reminds us that we need to honor where we came from. We need to know this is what happened in the past. One of the biggest things that historians will tell you is that as we forget the bad things that happened in our past, we begin to repeat them. And I'm not saying that you're going to repeat those traumas, but I'm saying that you need to learn from the things that have happened to you in the past. And you need to move forward. Um, and through the eyes of Iris, we're going to see this with truth and justice. We're not just going to see this from our wounded self, but we're going to see this from like where we need to see it from. Uh, it's very much an expanding energy, very affirming in this confidence to know that you are your own authority and that you have the, the power within to know what you need to do to take the right steps and to just move forward and be successful. So that's where the sun is in Aries. And it's very much just about this like you can do it energy let's do this and it's all in aries so they are very much on that first step but you can do this like get her done you've got this bam now the other transits that are happening are all interconnected because we have another four i was going to make up a fun word like quadra conjunction <laughs> Uh, but we have these other four planets that, well, not planets, we have other four planetary bodies that are all conjunct. We have Venus conjunct to Uranus, we have Uranus conjunct to the North Node, and we have the North Node conjunct to Mercury. At the baseline, in just those conjunctions, this can feel very disruptive and very much chaotic. This Venus conjunction to Uranus alone is a very disruptive energy. It calls upon very sudden change. It is things that affect all aspects of your life, not just one little part. Um, but it does like to focus. It does tend, the energy does tend to focus more around your relationships and your finances, which are a part of everything that you do. So that's kind of how those. Um, but it can be volatile. It can feel very disruptive. Um, all of the feelings that you might have held inside, like anything that you're holding on to that's left, like I'm going to hold on to this and I'm not going to bring out this trauma or I'm not going to say this thing or I'm not going to deal with this issue or I'm not going to tell somebody something, it's going to bubble to the surface. And whew, we are going to feel this big disruptive change. Now, luckily, that those four entities are not interacting on their own because that is 
overwhelming. Um, Mercury does bring in this higher point of mind. It lends, you know, us, it leads us through change with the power of foresight. So we do have this little bit of like light at the end of the tunnel that's like, hey, even though Uranus is rocking your world right now and they are just throwing everything to the haywire being conjunct with the North Node and like really, so the North Node is about endings and new beginnings, but mostly the new beginnings part. But Uranus is like, hey, if there's anything you left behind or that you're trying to bring with you into the next place, you're, that, that's coming to the surface right now and we're not bringing that with us. We're going to move forward. And it being um, quincux to the moon, it adds to this volatile, eruptive, revolutionary energy because the moon is very much about our interconnectedness with other people. And so we have this communal uh, awakening of everybody's like true self and how they all kind of in this web of interconnectedness coming to light and really, the light was shining, the words in my brain, but bubbling up to the surface would be a better term. And so that quincux with the moon really adds to that revolutionary motivation to like, no, I can do this. It is time. I'm not going to just sit and wait anymore. Now, the one more, whatever. So... The North Node is Mercury, R square to Pluto, which is another massive social change. Pluto is death and destruction. It is the end. The North Node is new beginnings. And when they are square like that, it's like a bam, the end is here. We are having this new thing. And it being conjunct with Mercury brings about this like fundamental wisdom that's like, hey, I'm going to tell you what you need to do and we're going to get this done and this change is happening regardless if you're ready or not. Um, so like I said in other videos, if you choose to just step by and allow these energies to pass you up and say, okay, whatever, I don't need to step into this new self, you're really missing out on this great opportunity. And right now the energies are like reminding you, hardcore of that. And this can all feel really overwhelming, like this is the end. Uh, but just know that this is the end that's going to bring on a better future. This is the end that's going to help you start on that path to being the person that you want to be and being productive. Um, now, all of that is very much softened by some beautiful energy that, like I said, is very interconnected. And because all of these things are so interconnected, we can't just talk about it as one, like the destructive or eruptive nature of Uranus being conjunct to the North Node. And that's not happening in a jar, vacuum, sealed by itself. Like, that's not how this happens. It is very interconnected with these other energies. So we have Venus trying to Pluto, which is this deep, passionate, loving energy that's like, let me bring out your true self and the things that make you really, truly feel passionate and, and compassion and deep compassion for yourself. And so it's like a Let's see the world through loving eyes. Even though we have all of this destructive things going on, here's some rose-colored glasses to help you see the path that you need to be on. We have Venus sextile to Neptune, which brings in this loving, higher perspective. To me, it's like seeing the world through the eyes of like Aphrodite or Venus and just being in love with everything, being in love with life. And seeing the world through those eyes, like the eyes of a child the first time you see something amazing, watching a butterfly pollinate, like all of these very amazing things that are beautiful. And when we see them, they bring out this, like, oh, that is divine inspiration. That energy is coming through. So it's very much this, like, we have this balance with Pluto being trying to Venus, and then it... Venus being sextile to Neptune, that's this, you know, Pluto is the under and Venus or Neptune is above and it's very much balancing this out all under this, uh, all under this Libra moon of balance. And so we have this focus, like this, not focus, this common theme of balance very much. And knowing that 
there is this support for both from deep within and also from the gods. Um, we have Neptune is sextile to Pluto, which is, so these are th three planets we're talking about. <laughs> uh, and they, this brings in this really balanced energy. Again, because we're creating this higher and lower um, coming together. And it brings in this deeper intuition and this greater hindsight, like 2020, bigger picture. So you're getting both sides to that coin. So those in with Venus bring about this very loving, grand perspective of like compassion and kindness and love and like you can do this. It's like a really big hug. So you've got this, you know, loving goddess that's come in and she's just like, I'm here for you. I know that things look really scary, but we've cleared the path and it's okay. On the other side, we have uh, Mercury and the North Node sextile to Saturn, which brings in this logical communication, this foundational energy. It is this helping approach to a situation. It is going to be the inspiration to say, hey, I know who to ask for help or for that to just kind of appear like, oh, hey, I've got this resource. Did you need it? And you're like, yes, I need that. Um, I need some white paint. So if some white paint could come into my... <laughs> but we have uh, just this great foundational energy in this sextile. Then we have... Mercury and Uranus also sextile to Mars, which is very energizing. It's very much motivating. It's going to give you the right words to say when you need to say them at the right time and the right order. And you're going to be a warrior with your words. Just like knowing this is what I need to say. I got this. I have the right answer. And again, with a very beautiful interconnectedness, we have Saturn trying to Mars, which this really aligns all of your powers. It is aligning your mind, your body, your schedule, your resources, your community, everything that you need in order to find success in your goals. And it is a very charismatic, confident energy. And then to this side, we have the God energy and this masculine energy that's like, hey, you've got this. I'm going to help you know what to say. I'm going to help you find the resources that you need and you can make it through this. And so when we put all of this together, we have this really nurturing, balanced, supportive universal energy helping to guide us down the path. And that's like I said earlier, I envision just this, the energy of your child standing in the midst of all of this destruction and you have rubble on both sides of you. And the goddess hands you some rose-colored glasses. And they both kind of like put their hands on your back. And they show you that right in front of you, like right in front of you. You don't have to look for it. It's right there. Bam. It's a perfectly cleared path. It is where you need to go. And now you just need to step down that path right through all of this destruction. And, and be done with it. And you've got this. And so all together we bring about this big universal energy supporting you through this big change and as long as you are your own authority and you step through this like I said with kindness and courtesy and integrity and treating people the way that you would want to be treated you your path is right in front of you you just simply have to take that path like let go of your trauma let go of your hurts like I know that is so hard to do. Like just saying that, I was like, wow, that is so much easier said than done. But you can do it and you can move forward. And now is that time. We have this beautiful interconnected energy that, like I said, is very much just this, you can do this. And on the other side, we have all these planets and Aries that are like, we're taking this first step. We still have all of our planets moving direct. Again, bringing this forward momentum to all of this energy. And Libra shining this very harmonious, balanced light across the whole spectrum. Like, oh, you've got this. Um, so. 
this might feel like a very disruptive time. This might feel very chaotic. This might feel like your entire world is crashing and crumbling around you. And it just might be. And sometimes when the world crumbles around us, it's okay. Sometimes it's time for that world to crumble. Sometimes we have to let go of certain things in order for us to move forward and to be successful and to find the things that we are seeking. The path is right in front of you. The universe is telling you that you can do this and that now is the time to just step forward. Uh, just as a last thing, I want to go over some magic and some things that you can do in order to be in alignment with this energy. And the first thing is to say it out loud. We don't recognize the power that our words have until we spew some hate speech at somebody we didn't even realize that we had in us. And I don't mean like racist or whatever. I just mean when you say something hateful that just spews out of your mouth and then you realize how powerful those words are. You're just like, oh, I can't believe I just like the look on their face, the way that they took that. The, I, I am, you know. And if we realize the power of our words in a more productive manner, we can really use them in order to heal and do magic and to, you know, prosper. And so one of the most productive, just say it kind of magic is to stand in front of the mirror and to tell yourself your trauma. Be real with yourself. Like, this is what happened. And say it out loud. Sometimes we don't want to say it to somebody else. Sometimes we feel embarrassed or like we need to take on some kind of responsibility for that. Or sometimes it happened so long ago, we're not even sure exactly what happened. We just know something happened. Or maybe you don't even, you know, I need to know if this is just in my own brain. Who knows? Whatever trauma you're carrying, go in the mirror and say it to yourself. Say it out loud. Say, I went through this situation. This is what happened. And then grieve that. Feel that. Allow those feelings to come to the surface. Allow yourself to process that and heal from that situation. Tell yourself, I learned so much from this. I learned how to be a better person. I learned how to protect myself. I learned how to read. I don't know, whatever it is. Uh, but also at the same time, grieve those parts of yourself that you no longer need to hold on to. Maybe as a child or in a past relationship or in a past, past place in your life, you really had to protect yourself in certain ways that you don't need to do anymore. There are coping mechanisms that we make and create throughout our life that don't always serve us. And maybe it's time to just grieve those moments and be like, I had this trauma, created this coping mechanism. This is no longer in my life. It's time to let go and move forward. <sighs> Take that breath, really grieve that, cry about it, tell yourself about it, work it out. And, you know, allow this harmonious, just, beautiful energy of Libra. It's not just find balance and duality. It's about this harmonious, justful energy that's like, hey, this is what's right. And I see that this happened to you. Sometimes a victim just needs to be recognized. And so maybe that inner child of you needs to be recognized and those victim aspects need to be recognized. And so recognize them in yourself by looking in the mirror and saying it out loud and hearing yourself and seeing yourself and feeling that and processing that. And that can be some of the most potent magic. It can really help you to heal and process and move forward. At the same time, you can use this in affirmative magic. And I am going to heal. I am going to be successful. I am these things. Whatever it is that you need to hear or you need to tell yourself, make that affirmation and say it to yourself in the mirror. Maybe you don't want to ride in the mirror in a marker or you don't want to hold a sticky note up. So the next time you're in the shower and the mirror's all foggy, write your mantra in the steam. And then you see it when the window gets, or mirror gets foggy and it's there for you. And it can be time for you to reflect and to help you to really internalize and say that and process and, and make that happen. This is also a great time to set goals. Say to yourself in a goal, I am going to do this. This will be done by this date. I'm going to get this whatever. This is my goal and I'm going to achieve it. Say it to yourself. Know it. Hear it. Process it. And you will find that success. It will manifest more quickly, more effectively, with less turmoil if you do those things. If you don't want to talk in front of the mirror, 
even though I really recommend saying it out loud, write it down. This is a great time to do some free journaling. Uh, just sit down with the pen and start writing. Today I feel and see what words come out. And just keep writing until you have nothing left to write. Or maybe you need something more productive. Get out an introspective journal, find some great questions, and ask yourself these things and really reflect on how you're feeling, on what your goals are. Um, and overall, with that reflecting theme, stop and take a moment as we are in the spring moon to see what in your life is blossoming, what is taking roots, what is growing, and what energies are sprouting in your life because of what you're focusing on, both intentionally and unintentionally. Really see, like, okay, I set all of these goals. Here are the things that are popping off. These things kind of fizzled out. I don't even like that one anymore. Let's drop these ones and focus our energy on where it needs to be. Or I set all these goals. And I'm still focused on this other thing over here that has nothing to do with these goals. And why is that? And kind of figure that out. Where are you at with your cycle this year and the goals that you set based upon what you learned in the darkness of last year through processing what happened throughout the last cycle? So now that you made those goals, you've thought about it. We're like, this is who I'm going to be. This is what I'm going to do this year. We set those New Year's resolutions. I say that because it's not really New Year's. And first, I don't know. It's a weird timeline. But now is when we really are like, okay, I thought I wanted this, but this is what's happening. And here are my real goals. And then say them in productive. Move forward. That path is in front of you and you can do this. So. I hope everybody has a great day. I hope that your full moon is blessed. I hope that you are able to see the light at the end of the tunnel because it's there. It's very much there. If you have any questions or concerns or comments, don't forget to do that stuff down below. Let me know. You can always reach out on Facebook or hollowedstonesrealm.org or through YouTube, whatever. Like, subscribe, all that great stuff. And I hope that you have an amazing rest of your day. Many blessings.